again it's April here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking all about Birdfest which is a challenge that I completed last month and I also co-hosted it which is pretty cool. So this video is going to be a little bit about the challenge, my thoughts on how it felt to host a challenge and also some tips if you're thinking about um, doing a challenge in the future like one of these monthly art challenges that are popping up on Instagram every month it seems, every month. So Birdfest is a challenge that runs in the month of January where you paint or draw or make or craft a burb, a bird, every day for the month of January. It was created by the mother of all burbs, Birdie Tam, and I did it for the first time last year. I completed it every day. I did ink doodles and it was really fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. And at the end, I actually made a whole bunch of different products. I made sticker sheets and I think I made a print. Um, I made a zine and also I made some enamel pins, which were my first enamel pins and it was super fun to make. I love birds. I love drawing birds. So as you can imagine, this challenge was right up my alley. I was trying to think of a bird related pun there, but I couldn't. I'm sure a lot of you know who Birdie Tam is and follow her online, but if not, I will leave all of her links below because she is the creator of the challenge. So I definitely want to shout her out on here. Uh, she has a YouTube channel and also an Instagram. She makes some really cool pottery and other little bits and pieces. So yes, definitely go check out Birdie. So this year for Burb Fest, I had the pleasure of co-hosting. Birdie messaged me a few days before January and said that she was going to be very busy in the month of January with her shop update and holidays and other little bits and pieces and asked me if I would mind co-hosting it because I did it all last year and I was probably going to do it all again this year if it was running. So of course I said yes. I did have a pretty busy month in January with work and also some life stuff but you can't just say no when someone asks you to host a challenge on Instagram. So it was my first time doing it. it I learned a lot of doing it. It was really fun and can you hear the donkeys? <laughs> They're so loud. Um, so yeah, that's basically how I ended up co-hosting uh, Burbfest. And th this is a video about it, uh, kinda. I have hosted Draw This In Your Styles before when I've reached a milestone on Instagram, but they weren't as big or had as many people join as Burbfest. So it was a really fun challenge and I thought I would talk about my experience now. So the first thing that we did, obviously the first thing that you should do if you're gonna host a challenge is come up with a list of prompts. Um, Birdie had already got like, I'm pretty sure 75 to 80% of the birds, but she graciously allowed me to pick a few of my own. So I picked a few to pop into the list. A couple of them are on my favorite birds, like the long-tailed tit, and some of them are birds that we have in the area that I'm hoping to see or I have seen, like the, um, the osprey and other birds were just cute like the sandwich turn was that my one i can't remember the zebra finch was that my one i can't remember <laughs> i can't remember i can't remember what birds apart from a couple that i chose but i probably picked like six or seven which was really nice i also picked a bird and sent it to birdie and she said april that was a bird we did last year and i completely had forgotten i mean i guess when you think about it birds do kind of look the same they have eyes wings legs and beaks so i mean it's easy to make that mistake right so co-hosting the actual challenge was pretty interesting. Normally when I do a challenge like this, I will post my work every day, but sometimes if I'm busy or I forget or I just don't feel like it, I don't really, like I don't have to, I can just like catch up or just even skip a day, which is totally fine when you do a challenge like this. And I think it's normal for us to get busy and not be able to draw or post every day. But because I was um, hosting the challenge, I kind of felt like I needed to, but I wasn't super stressful because I chose a style and like a method of doing the birds that um, was pretty simple. So I managed to draw them every day and get them posted or even draw some in advance. So they were ready to post. But yeah, the needing to post every day definitely felt like a big thing when I was a uh, co-host in the challenge. And then the other main thing that was different from just taking part was the number of tags and mentions that I got throughout the month of January and I'm still getting them now as people are kind of finishing the challenge off. And this, I don't know why, I just was not expecting this at all. Um, 
I thought maybe people would maybe like mention the like the hashtag or something but I didn't realize so many people tagged the host of the challenge and it was really cool it was a little bit overwhelming um because I felt bad if I didn't see everyone's posts or if I didn't comment on everyone's so at the end of the day because I work a day job so I've been really busy at my day job so throughout the day I kind of like turned my phone upside down so I wouldn't see <laughs> the Instagram notifications popping up and then at the end of the day I would go through them all and um, comment or like um, and share I like to share the work every day because I think that's really nice for the community to see other people other people's work and also maybe find new favorite artists that they like and I also think it's just a really nice thing when I'm doing a challenge so for example when I did Peachtober last October and Fairy Little Peach shared my work I was like amazed that she had found it and liked it so um, I really wanted to share as much work as I could but I didn't want to overwhelm people because I know that when you're going through stories and you're just like swiping and it's like never ending <laughs> so I tried to do like maybe 10 to 15 a day which I think is a nice little amount to share every day so I think these are the main differences between uh, hosting a challenge and just taking part is the amount of tags and comments and also feeling the need to definitely like reply back or at least acknowledge people because if they're doing the challenge I think it's really nice to uh, try and see everyone's work and I know that this is a smaller challenge so again like I keep talking about Peachtober but it's a hugely popular one and I have no idea how Furry Little Peach manages <laughs> to keep up with all the Peachtober stuff. She did such an amazing job last year and it was such a fun challenge to be part of. So even doing a 1% of that um, this year, if I was a good co-host and people enjoyed it and uh, that, that, made, that makes me really happy that um, I can uh, help make the challenge um, more exciting for people and the fact that Birdie asked me to co-host meant so much to me and it was so fun and I was so honoured. So if you're watching Birdie thank you again it was super super fun. So yeah that was my experience hosting the challenge and now I wanted to share a couple of little uh, tips if you are taking part in the challenge later in the year because uh, one of these is a big big thing that I've never done in a challenge and I definitely think it will help. So yeah, these are my tips. Some of these are super generic guys, so I'm not gonna lie. But uh, obviously one of the main things is if you want to take part in the challenge every day, that's totally awesome. You don't have to. In Burbfest there was actually a short list. I think it was one a week, or maybe it was like four or five, I can't remember. But if you do want to complete the challenge and do um, a prompt every single day, I definitely think it's good to do a couple of things. One is keep it simple, which I know is super hard, especially when you know more people might be seeing your work because it is a challenge, but try and keep it simple if you can so you don't stress yourself out too much. Last year for Burbfest I just did, I got the cheapest notebook that I could find, like the thinnest pages. Um, I got my bamboo pen and some ink and I literally did ugly doodles of birds. They were popular. I have, I don't know why, there were some of them were cute. Some of those days, the birds did not look like birds. They looked like some kind of deformed alien monster. But uh, it was fun to do, it was super simple. This year I kind of ramped it up a bit, but I still kept it simple. So I've been doing these mixed media birds for the last few months and I've been using watercolor, pencil and crayon. And then I did them really messy and I took them into Procreate and tidied them up, which took like double as long as it takes just to draw them. So this uh, year for Burbfest, I wanted to do the same kind of style, but I wanted to have like minimal cleanup in Procreate because that's the hardest thing to do. Not, not hard, just the most time consuming thing to do. So I kept it simple. First I did a page of warm ups, which is really helpful for me. Uh, you guys might be able to skip this stage, but I really love doing warm up sketches because it helps me not only warm up my hands and my brain for drawing, but also kind of understand the shape of the bird and help stylize it a little bit. So when I come to do the final, sometimes I didn't even look at the reference, I just looked at my sketches, so they were kind of more stylized. And then I would take care, <laughs> which is very difficult for me, but I would try to take care to actually paint cleanly and draw cleanly so I didn't have to clean up in Procreate. Sometimes this meant that my sketches looked a bit like my final 
sketches things looked a bit tight which I don't enjoy at all but I think that only happened like three or four times maybe and the rest of the times I was really happy with most of my finals and I only had to change the levels in Photoshop and then I could like post it to Instagram and it would be a nice clean sketch so that was my version of keep it simple some of you may not think that doing a page of warm-up sketches and then sketching the bird out and then doing mixed media and then putting it in Photoshop to do the levels is simple probably isn't actually now that I think about it but for me it was definitely manageable and I think that's the key word keep it manageable not simple yeah manageable the other thing that really helps is to kind of stay ahead of the deadline. So some of the challenge purists out there may not agree with this and think that you have to definitely sit down every day and draw something every day and post it that day. Uh, I am not in that camp. I think it's completely fine at the weekend or whenever you're free to sit down and maybe do three or four and then you're always like ahead. So if you have one day where there's an emergency or you have to work late or you get stuck in traffic or anything that can happen maybe just don't feel like it you don't have to draw something but you can still post if that's something you want to do post every day which is definitely something i wanted to try to do so i always kept a little bit ahead i think the only time i didn't i think a couple of nights where i got really busy at work and i had to do it at night time one time i even did it on stream so and then i had to like go upstairs and edit it and post it at like 11 pm but most of the time I managed to stay ahead and that was super, super helpful. So stay ahead if you can. So now we come into the the one thing that I had never thought of before, but guys, it's so it's such a good tip, I think. Um, and only one that I realized when I was um, helping host the challenge is to tag the creator of the challenge or the person that's hosting the challenge. So I did all of Peachtober last year and uh, my got my work shown maybe like three or four times on the Peach Tober account, which was super awesome. But I never tagged Fairy Little Peach in any of my posts. I think she just found them through the hashtag. And when I was looking for work to share every day, I would of course look through the hashtag and find people's work. But the accounts that I noticed the most were the people that were tagging me and or me and Birdie every single day because they would show up in your. In your Instagram like you you just see it you can just see it every like people they're coming and they're attacking all the attacks I'm getting I'm getting a little bit flustered thinking about it guys <laughs> but I see the tags people a lot of people tag every single day um I never thought to do this because in my head I was like I don't want to annoy the person like by tagging them but it actually is super helpful because it makes like it's like someone bringing you the piece of art rather than you having to go find it and the people who didn't tag every day or, or at all and just use the hashtag some people I didn't find until like the last two or three days like I had completely their stuff had just been lost to Instagram like lost to the hashtag and I just hadn't seen it and a couple of accounts were so awesome like their birds were amazing and I wish I had found them so I could have like t shared their work and seen their work all month long so if you're going to do a challenge, don't worry about annoying that person. <laughs> Just do it. Tag them every day um, in your post. I would say in your post is best. In stories, it's kind of awkward because then if you want to share that work, you have to kind of like go through the post, go through the story into the post and then share it or if you want to comment on it. But yeah, tag away, I think. Tag away. And the last two little kind of tips, they're not really tips, they're just kind of like obvious. <laughs> One is so cliche guys, but have fun. Um, if you're finding it not fun, just don't do it. If one of the birds or one of the prompts on any challenge you're doing, you don't like it, just don't do it, it's fine. The world isn't gonna end, it's, it's a cool, it's okay. Uh, try to have fun. And also, I think it's amazing if you can, if you have time to chat with other people, comment on other people's work, um, look through the hashtag, you'll find some amazing people to follow, some amazing inspiration. And you may even meet uh, a couple of new art friends, which would be really lovely. I met a few people uh, over the month that I definitely chatted with more than others. And it's just really nice. It's just really nice meeting new people, I think. So yeah, have fun. Um, get in with the community if you have time and if that's kind of your kind of thing and draw birds or <laughs> other things I guess. Speaking of inspiration I wanted to chat a little bit about the Burb Fest community. 
it was really lovely there was the same familiar faces every day and the same birds well different birds same style that we popping up every day you'll start to recognize people's styles uh, you'd be chatting with people it was really lovely so what I did I wanted to share some of my favorite bird artists that I found not they're not just bird artists but you know they did birds I wanted to share my favorite so what I did is did a top 10 <laughs> a top 10 I'm gonna go through them quickly and then I also started just doing honorable mentions I was gonna do like three or four but I kept adding names to the list and I have like I'm looking at my I have like 25 people on here so I obviously can't go through them all but I would definitely um go on the hashtag if you haven't already and just scroll and just see if people pop out to you. But uh, if you're looking for some new inspiration, I'm gonna share my 10 favorite uh, bird accounts, bird fest artists from last month in no particular order. And I've also messaged everyone and got their permission to share their work. So thank you if you guys are watching um, for letting me share your work. And let's have a look at some of my favorite artists from last month. So not on the list, but definitely have to mention Birdie Tam again. Uh, I think Birdie only managed to do like three, two or three, uh, but they were lovely. So I'm gonna pop them on the screen. She has a really cool style when she does her birds and stylizes them, characterizes them really cool. And her style is very recognizable. So this is the creator mother of all burbs, Birdie Tam. First up is Knitting Grace. So you may have come across Knitting Grace. I'm pretty sure I shared all of her burbs every single day um even when I think she maybe was like one or two days late on some of them but they were literally the cutest things I've ever seen in my life she knitted all the birds and the way she changed the shape of them and the detail and the color on every single bird and how much it looked like that bird was amazing some of my favorites were the zebra finch I think probably my favorite was the zebra finch I really loved the the lap wing was so cute i'm looking on her um feed now and all these birds are absolutely so gorgeous so that was knitting grace with her knitted birds next up is megsville who made the funniest characters the funniest birds I, every time i saw one of these birds it just made me smile so much i think it was it was must have been a combination of the colors and the pose but definitely those googly eyes they were it, they were just so fun every day i loved seeing um the birds from mixville so yeah mixville thank you for for sharing the joy it was lovely next up is lini whose username is quite hard to i don't understand but i think it's leans the lima i'll leave all the links below don't worry so Lini's birds were super fun. The characterization of the birds was amazing. I think my favorite was probably the indigo bunting. And I just love all the color and the little shapes and everything in the background. Definitely one of the most colorful uh, bird fests, I think, in January. Next up is Eclectic Starlin, uh, Rachel, who when I asked right at the start of bird fest, maybe like five or six days in, uh people that uh people had found like inspirations that people had found rachel was definitely a fan favorite a few people will come and mentioned her she did these birds and some of them are like normal birds but then also sometimes she would do like a round version of the bird like a bull bird and these guys were some of the funniest and cutest birds <laughs> online uh i love the eastern yellow robin is basically just like a ball of sunshine with feathers and the zebra finch is amazing and then the the i think the funniest one for me is the nankeen night heron whose eyes look like he's seen something but yeah they, they were all amazing next up is valerie last name i will not try to pronounce so valerie's work is also super super bright uh very cute you guys can probably tell i just really love cute things the one thing that stood out to me on valerie's birds was they had this amazing texture so they all had they were fluffy or the feathers popped out you know like how they should um amazing texture work and then each of the birds would have this like very stark eye like starkly different than the texture that would just pop out from the bird and it would just draw you in to the the photo so yeah i really loved valerie's birds especially the lap wing i think is the cutest little thing uh, i mean they're all gorgeous honestly and 
she posted this isn't a bird but she posted a tiger right after burp fest and it's also flipping cute guys so go check out Valerie her work is lovely okay next up we have JL Ruth I think that's how you pronounce the username Jen and Jen's birds were very different than the last three I've shown so um, a lot more realistic some of them had beautiful color some of them were just gorgeous line art and it was almost like realism but stylized realism I guess the line work on these birds is phenomenal I love them all I think my favorites probably has to be the osprey it's just so gorgeous and the ones with the colors I love so much the um, crowned pigeon at the end was incredible they're all just so gorgeous they're so delicate and artistic the group of penguins uh, guys I just can't even I love them all so that was Jen all right next up we have Juliana Motsko I think Juliana uh again super cute birds guys uh the thing I love about Juliana's birds is they all seem to be going somewhere so they all seem to be mid stride or like on their way somewhere I love the penguin trying to catch the butterfly and the there's a flamingo in here which wasn't part of burp fest but it's also really cute um the zebra finch you know what guys the wall creeper is also amazing i mean they're all beautiful juliana's work definitely stood out to me because the characters they all seem to have their own little personalities and i also really love the poses especially the walking ones because when i this is something i want to get better at but when i draw animals I do stylize them the colors are a bit you know unrealistic the textures the shapes but I haven't yet been able to make a character out of them which is what I really like to do and that's why some of these the artists that I'm sharing they managed to make a character out of their birds which is something that I uh, I really would really love to do in the future so in the near future I'm gonna be working on it guys so next we have little kin I think <laughs> It's Nanny from Australia. G'day mate. You call that a burb? This is a burb. First of all, let me just say one thing about um, this account. Yellow. That's, I mean, isn't my favorite color? It sure is. So obviously I'm gonna love this. I'm gonna love anything if you put it on a yellow background. <laughs> but these birds are so beautiful. The texture in them, the colors, the this one here the penguin like jumping in the air is amazing and i love how you can still see the yellow shining through the birds like it's not a solid render it's kind of sketchy but ugh, just the colors and the shading and everything the finches amazing like everything so guys have we seen the night jar it's it's incredible the purples and the black against that yellow oh, i mean this this use of color is stunning and let me gush about someone else <laughs> all right so next up we have craig craig or craig craig so craig as soon as i saw his work i was like this guy is very cinematic and when i went to his uh instagram account it says he's a digital artist and i'm guessing he does stuff for movies or like concept art for games or something because he has a lot of that stuff on his Instagram but the way he draw his, draws his birds they were so cinematic it was like each burb was like a frame from an amazing animated movie um, incredible and also I love how he didn't just copy the reference like I did let's be honest <laughs> just copy the reference but he gave them all personality a different lighting situation um, different mood it, they were just so lovely so some of my favorites are the sandwich turn with that amazing backlight from the sun and the osprey like the little ecuadorian hill star with his little um beak like you can just see it vibrating like he's just i don't know sneezed or something oh it, it's just amazing it's people sometimes you look at people's artwork and you just you just don't understand how they do this how they do this last one is kate from tiny tiny kate creates which also is an amazing name tiny kate creates it just rolls off the tongue um the thing about loved about kate's birds were and the backgrounds and obviously i love the birds too 
but I think Kate was one of the only people that I saw on Burbfest do a background like every single day and like I mentioned guys keep it simple for me doing the background is not simple that's why I just draw stars but Kate managed to do an amazing background pretty much every day and some of these are just so stylized and they go so well with the birds that they're doing so I'm looking at the knickerbar pigeon right now and you see all the tiny little leaves a little bit up there's a sandwich turn which is completely different again with the beautiful like yellow sun behind them it's just so like decorative I don't know what style you would call this but it's definitely a style that I wouldn't feel comfortable doing because it's so detailed and it's so it looks so like polished and thought out but I do love looking at it so yeah that was Kate so those were my favorite top 10 I have a list here I'm looking at it now there's so many people on this list that I want to mention but I haven't asked anyone so I don't want to just in case I don't want to mention anyone um, or show any artwork without permission and I had way too many um, <laughs> I had way too many names on there to ask everyone but if you did like what you saw and you didn't even know Burfest was a thing and you liked some of these artists definitely check out the hashtag Burfest 2023 and you'll find some new lovely artists to follow with all of that said, I have been talking for a long time. I have been talking for 37 minutes. There's been a lot of bloopers though and mistakes in here, so hopefully this video isn't 37 minutes long. I hope that you enjoyed it and it was a little insight into kind of how it felt to host a challenge and also um, you found some artists to follow maybe that I shared. Let me know below, did you take part in Burbfest? Did you enjoy it? If you didn't, would you like to do it next year if it's running? I definitely would, but then again, I love drawing birds so I mean we could do a burp tober I guess there is a burp tober guys this lava lamp behind me has been on for 37 minutes and it still hasn't started yet right so anyway um I've been talking for so long now I'm starting to lose my mind so I will go thanks so much for watching if you got to the end of this video I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll be back in a couple more weeks I'm not sure what video I really want to do a filming setup and show you my filming so maybe I can get that done if I have time no promises though, it could just be a speed paint. But I'll be back in a couple of weeks, so I'll see you then. Until then, have a lovely time, have a lovely day, weekend, week, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.